Hello friends, the topic of this video is right atrium and the exam questions that are asked from this topic in theory paper they include a short note on internal features of right atrium or a short note on right atrium itself. Then draw label diagram to show internal features or the interior of the right atrium and enumerate the veins or the structures opening into right atrium and then the MCQs can also come from this topic. In practical examination and spotting you can be asked to identify the structures marked such as A or B right and in Viva Voci you will be asked to show the internal features of right atrium and show the veins that open into the right atrium. So in exams, if you get a question to write a short note on right atrium or internal features of right atrium, you should write it under these uh, headings. Uh, if it is interior or internal features of right atrium, describe very briefly the external features and then the division of the interior of right atrium into two parts, then features of those two parts and very, very briefly their development. Then about the interatrial septum, its features and again very briefly about its development. Then veins that open into right atrium and the applied or the clinical anatomy. Let us start with the external features of the right atrium. So here, uh, what is the shape of this chamber? It is quadrilateral in shape and uh, you all must be knowing that it receives the deoxygenated blood from the entire body via superior vena cava and inferior vena cava and from here the blood goes into the right ventricle through an orifice which is located here that is known as a right atrioventricular orifice. Now right atrium it contributes to certain surfaces and borders of the heart externally. So let us see that. A right atrium is going to form part of the sternocostal surface. So this is the sternocostal surface and it is forming a part of it. Then it also forms one third of the base. So we can see here this is the base of the heart or the posterior surface of the heart. Two third is formed by the left atrium and one third is formed by the right atrium. It also forms the right border of the heart. So right border is completely formed by the right atrium here. Now there is an ear like appendage which you can see here the striped area here this is known as right auricle. So this ear like muscular structure it projects from its anterior superior part and overlaps the root of the ascending aorta and reaches the pulmonary trunk. There is also a shallow groove along the right border of the right atrium extending from superior vena cava to inferior vena cava and this is known as sulcus terminalis. On the inner aspect at the same position there will be a crest known as crista terminalis. Now let us look at the interior of the right atrium. So what has been done here? Uh, the anterior aspect you can see here of the right atrium has been cut. So for along this line it has been cut and reflected like this. So this is the anterior aspect of the right atrium and this is the posterior aspect of the right atrium. So interior of right atrium is divided into two parts and what divides it into two parts? It is this thick crest which you see here which is known as crista terminalis extending from the superior vena cava to inferior vena cava as I told you earlier. On the outer side there will be a shallow groove along this right exactly at the same position known as sulcus terminalis. Now what are the two parts? The two parts are first is the rough anterior part. This is the rough anterior part. It is also known as pectinate part and atrium proper and you can see here there it has got number of muscular ridges which are known as musculi pectinati. These are known as musculi pectinati. So this is the rough anterior part. Because of the presence of muscular pectinati, it is known as the pectinate part and atrium proper. I'll tell you why it is called because of its embryological origin. Then we have the smooth part. This is the smooth part of the right atrium and this is also known as sinus venarum. Again, this word comes from its embryological origin. So what are the two parts of the right atrium, the internal aspect? One is the atrium proper. This is rough and the second is the sinus venarum, which is smooth part. Let us
Let us now briefly consider the embryological origin of the two parts of right atrium. So in this picture you can see here this is the heart tube. Initially it is straight but here it has formed a loop. This end is the arterial end and this is the venous end. So here you can see this is the primitive ventricle which will give rise to the adult ventricles here. This is primitive atrium which will give rise to part, parts of the um, adult atria. And here we have the sinus venosus which has got two horns. This is the right horn and this is the left horn. So let us see how the rough part and the smooth part of the right atrium are derived. So rough part or the anterior part that is derived from the primitive atrium and that's why the name is atrium proper. So it develops from primitive atrium. You can see here in these pictures the brown colored area. So you can see here auricle and this part of the atria that is the rough part and here also you can see on the posterior aspect the atrium proper. This is develops from the primitive atrium. Then the smooth part that is known as sinus venarum. Why it is known as sinus venarum? Because it is derived from the right horn of sinus venosus. So you can see here this part that is the posterior, the smooth part which is known as sinus venarum is derived from right horn of sinus venosus. So this you, you should remember that rough anterior part known as atrium proper is derived from primitive atrium. Smooth posterior part known as sinus venarum, the name itself will give you an idea. That is derived from right horn of sinus venosus. Now let us look at the features of the rough part and the smooth part. So atrium proper or rough part as I told you earlier it has number of transverse muscular ridges right known as musculi pectinati. They all arise from this crista terminalis and they run forward because this has been cut from here. They will run forward towards the auricle and towards the right atrioventricular orifice. Whereas if we look at the sinus venarum or the smooth part, it has got many openings, right? The openings are of the four veins and one opening which uh, through which it communicates with the right ventricle. So these openings are the first one is of the superior vena cava, second is of the inferior vena cava, third opening is of the coronary sinus and fourth opening, right, you can see small openings, these are the Thibesian veins or venae cordis vein, minimi. And the fifth is the right atrioventricular orifice. Now the veins that open into the right atrium, we have already seen four, but there is uh, one more uh, vein of in fact two to three veins which also open into the right atrium. So in total there are five right veins which will open into the right atrium. These are superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, coronary sinus which is going to drain the heart itself right and venae cordis minimi which are known as Thibesian veins. These are present in each chamber of the heart. So they actually are going to drain the that particular uh, chamber the venous blood into that particular uh, chamber of the heart and then we have anterior cardiac veins coming from the right ventricle crossing the atrioventricular sulcus and draining into the opening mainly into the rough part of the right atrium. These are anterior cardiac veins. So the smooth part of the right atrium will have these four veins except the anterior cardiac veins. Let us now look at the interatrial septum from the right side that is from the right atrium side. So we'll find that it has got two structures. First is this depression which you see here which is known as fossa ovalis. So it is a shallow oval shaped depression and what does it represent? Uh, during fetal life there is an opening here right which communicates the right atrium with the left atrium and that is known as foramen ovale. So developmentally it is derived from a septum which is known as septum primum. We will see it uh, a little later how it is derived. So the first thing is the depression fossa ovalis and it is derived from which structure embryologically septum primum. This you have to remember. And then we have its boundaries, right? So you can see here there is it is bounded superiorly and on the sides but not inferiorly. So this is known as limbus fossa ovalis which bounds the fossa ovalis 
above and on sides but not inferiorly so limbus fossa ovalis forms upper and lateral margins of fossa ovalis and developmentally it is derived from another septum that is known as septum secundum its free lower edge or margin forms limbus fossa ovalis we will very briefly consider the development of interatrial septum as i said earlier it is formed by two septa now in this diagram this is the coronal view and this is the sagittal view in the coronal view you can see here this will be the right atrium this is the left atrium and you can see the two septa one is in green color this is the septum primum and the one which is present in the blue color this is septum secundum this is in this sagittal view you are looking at these septa from the right side so this is the septum secundum and this green one is the septum primum so these are the two septa that we have and these are the septum primum and the septum secundum and the septum secundum is present on the right side of the septum primum you can also see a opening here in the septum primum which is known as ostium secundum okay so now what happens so now what happens the septum secundum that grows downwards and is going to cover the opening in the septum primum which we called as ostium secundum and as a result an oblique foramen or aperture remains there connecting the right atrium to the left atrium and we call this oblique foramen as foramen ovale so during fetal life the blood that can flow from right atrium into the left atrium through the foramen ovale because uh, the most of the blood which right atrium is receiving that is already oxygenated by the placenta and the lungs are not functioning so this will go to the left atrium after birth what happens because of the pressure changes in the left and right atria as a result of that the septum primum will be pushed against the septum secundum and eventually they are going to fuse with each other and this depressed area which you will find here will be formed by the uh, septum primum known as fossa ovalis and this lower free margin of the septum secundum will form the limbus fossa ovalis now what else is located in the right atrium uh, we also have sinuatrial or sa node and atrioventricular or av nodes parts of the conducting system of heart also located in the right atrium so let us look at their exact location sa node that you can see here this is located in the upper part of the sulcus terminalis just below the opening of superior vena cava that is it is located here and about the av node the av node which you can see here this is smaller as compared to sa node and it is located in the lower part of interatrial septum this is the interatrial septum in its lower part and just above the attachment of the septum septal cusp of tricuspid valve this is the tricuspid valve and this is the septal cusp and the opening of coronary sinus this is the opening of coronary sinus now exact location you can say that av node is located in the triangle of cosh we will just see the boundaries of triangle of cosh triangle of cosh as the name suggests it is triangular area and it is bounded anteriorly by the septal cusp of tricuspid valve right which i had shown you there and posteriorly it is by the anterior margin of the opening of coronary sinus and then the third structure is present superiorly this is by tendon of tudaro so this is a sub endocardial fibrous ridge just beneath the endocardium there is a fibrous skeleton of the heart so it is one part of that only so sub endocardial fibrous ridge in this area that projects and forms the tendon of tudaro so these are the boundaries of the triangle of cosh coming to clinical anatomy you must mention one point that is patent foramen ovale now let us look at this diagram here you can see this is right atrium right ventricle left atrium left ventricle and this is the interatrial septa and in this interatrial septa we can see an oblique opening and this is the patent foramen ovale so this patent foramen ovale this has an embryological basis and what exactly is patent foramen ovale 
it is a flap like opening between the right and the left atria after birth that means in fetus it is obviously present there the foramen ovale but if it persists after birth it is not closed at the birth you call it as this condition as patent foramen ovale and flap like why because you can see this opening is not direct but uh, you can see here the septum secundum part is overlapping the septum primum part right the limbus fossa ovalis is uh, over the septum the fossa ovalis floor so an oblique opening is or flap like opening is produced so where exactly it will be located it will be located at the fossa ovalis and why does it happen it occurs due to non fusion of septum primum with the septum secundum now that was about the theory question let us come to the practical where you might be asked to uh, name the structure labeled in spotting or you will be asked to describe the various uh, structures in the interior of the right atrium so that you should know let us start with the first thing so what is this first thing you can see here this is crista terminalis the second one you can see here origin is from the crista terminalis you can see the muscular ridges these are musculi pectinatae the third this is the opening of superior vena cava fourth this is the opening of inferior vena cava fifth you can see here this is coronary sinus opening sixth this you can see as a small thebesian vein or the venae cordis minimi then seven this is the right atrioventricular orifice guarded by tricuspid valve and eighth this is the fossa ovalis and the ninth this is limbus fossa ovalis and the tenth is the tendon of todaro let us also consider some of the mcqs which are asked from this topic uh, first is all the following veins open into right atrium except so superior vena cava opens inferior vena cava opens small cardiac vein does not open this is a tributary of coronary sinus coronary sinus opens into the right atrium but not the small cardiac vein and anterior cardiac veins also open into the right atrium so the answer will be c then fossa ovalis develops from septum primum yes it develops from septum primum septum secundum what develops from septum secundum limbus fossa ovalis right horn of sinus venosus that gives rise to the smooth part of the right atrium and the primitive atrium this contributes to the rough part of the right atrium so the answer would be septum primum so these are the answer for first it is d anterior cardiac veins and for the second it is a that is septum primum now sa node where exactly it is located upper end of sulcus terminalis lower end of sulcus terminalis triangle of koch or limba fossa limbus fossa ovalis it is obviously located at the upper end of sulcus terminalis uh, which node is located in the triangle of koch it is the av node which is located here so the answer would be a for this then right atrium is involved in forming part of the sternocostal surface base of heart diaphragmatic surface of heart and right border of heart it is involved in all these except this one so the right answer would be 2c it is not involved in the formation of diaphragmatic surface of heart diaphragmatic surface of heart that is formed only and only by ventricles whereas the base of the heart is formed only and only by the atria so it contributes to a c and d but not to c so the answers would be first ka this answer would be a and the second ka this answer would be the c that's all thanks for watching and if you have liked the video please like and subscribe it so that i can put more such videos and please give your comments also uh, so that whatever you want those videos i should put and for notes and all important questions along with their answers right in anatomy you can visit my website that is anatomyqa.com thanks again